Number three, um, once again, I hope you can see that I, even, um, even when I factor the bottom, I still can't really cancel. But I'm going to go ahead and factor the bottom again um, anyways, just to show that I'm going to have uh, essentially almost two vertical asymptotes. So 3x minus 7, and then denominator I have x plus 3 and x minus 3. And so I have essentially two potential vertical asymptotes located at, at x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 3. So for even for each of those, I need to check both sides. And so here we have x is equal to 3. I need to check the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Also, with x is equal to negative 3, I have to check the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and check for x is equal to 3. And so I have the limit as x approaches positive 3, and we're going to go from the left. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my factored form. So 3x minus 7. You can actually use, it doesn't matter what form you use, it's just whichever one you choose. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my limit for the right-hand side. And so here's our little scratch work on the side. We're just kind of tracking positive and negatives. And so I'm going to pick a number to the left of 3 that's really close, so I don't know, 2.9. And so if I plug in uh, 3 times 2.9, is that bigger than negative 7? Well, uh, probably, most likely, because three, 3 times 3 is 9 minus 7, so I would say 2.9 is probably bigger than 7. So we have a, a positive in the numerator. And so next I'm going to do uh, 2.9, so I'm going here's my two factors. 2.9 plus 3, well that yields me a positive number. 2.9 minus 3, well that yields me a negative number, and so now I can just go ahead and multiply. And so I have a positive number in the numerator. A positive times a negative in the denominator yields a negative. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so this is going to negative infinity. And so now I'm going to check to see what happens if I plug in uh, a number to the right of 3, let's say 3.01. Well again, 3.01 times 3 minus 7, that's still going to give me a positive number. 3.01 plus 3, again, that's still going to give me a positive number. 3.01 minus 3 is still going to give me a positive number. Well, if I multiply the denominator together and divide by the, um, with the numerator, I'm going to get a positive number. So I'm going to positive infinity. And so I have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 3. Now, let's check with, uh, whoops. So now let's check with uh, negative 3. And so I'm going to go ahead and set my limits up. x is equal to negative 3 from the left of 3x minus 7 divided by x plus 3 and do x minus 3. And same idea with the right-hand side. 3x minus 7 divided by x plus 3 x minus 3, and I'm going to do the same do the same thing. And so I'm going to pick a number really close to negative 3 to the left. So I'm going to say negative 3.01. Well, if I have negative 3.01 times a positive 3, that's going to give me a negative. And if I subtract a 7 from it, I still get a negative number. And so now let's check the denominator. So if I have negative 3.01 plus a positive 3, that's still going to give me a negative number. And if I subtract a, a 3 from a negative 3.01, so negative 3.01 minus 3, that's still a negative number. So when I look at this, I have a negative divided by a positive, which is equal to a negative. And so for the left hand, I'm talking about negative infinity. All right, let's check the other side. 
And so I'm going to pick a number really close to negative 3 on the right. I'll have negative 2.9. Well, negative 2.9 times 3 gives me a negative number. And that if I subtract a 7, I still have a negative number. So again, the numerator is still have a negative. And so let's check the denominator. So negative 2.9 plus 3, well, since 3 is bigger, I'm going to get a positive number from that. And then from negative 2.9 minus 3, that's still going to give me a negative number because I'm having two negative numbers together. So let's simplify. I have a negative, and then I have a positive times a negative, which is a negative, and that gives me a positive. So we're talking about positive infinity. Number four, uh, when I have this, I have, um, I'm going to use both. I'm going to show you to use the calculator. I'm going to also use it algebraically. It's um, just like we've been doing in one through three. And I hope you can see that, again, if I try to factor the numerator in number four, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So I'm not even going to bother. And so I'm going to go ahead and check the um, left-hand side and the right-hand side. And so I'm going to do the limit as x approaches one from the left, and that'll be that x squared plus 5x minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the right-hand side. That'll be the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x squared plus 5x divided by x minus 1. And so let's go ahead and pick out those numbers again. So here's our little scratch work. Do a little scratch work over here. And so let's go ahead and pick numbers that are really close to 1 on the left, 0.9. And so if I plug in 0 .9, 0 0.9 in the numerator, I have a squared plus a positive number. Well, that's going to give me positive. And if I plug in 0 0.9 in the denominator, I'm going to get a negative. So this is going to negative infinity. And so now let's check the right-hand side. And the right-hand side of 1, that's going to be a value bigger than 1, so 1 .0, let's say 1.1. And so if I do 1.1 squared plus 5 times 1.1, I'm still going to get a positive number. And so I have a plus. And in the denominator, if I do 1.1 minus 1, I'm going to get a positive number. So a positive divided by positive is a positive. So we're going to positive infinity. So now I am going to show you how to just look this up on the calculator. All right, just go to your y equals, and let's go ahead and plug in our function, which is x squared plus 5x. So x squared plus 5x. Oops, make sure you put parentheses. I forgot that. So I'm going to insert my parentheses. And divide by parentheses x minus 1. And I'm just going to go ahead and graph it. And I get something that looks like that. And notice on, on the right hand side of my asymptote, you kind of see that vertical line at x equals 1. I can't really see anything, so I'm going to go ahead and change my window. And so I think my x is fine. I'm going to make my y values a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go up from my y max and going up to 20. Let's graph this. Oh, there it is. And so as you can see, uh, remember we said that on the left-hand side it was going to negative infinity. On the right-hand side we proved that it was going to positive infinity. And so you can just look at your graph and see that. All right, let's check out number five. All right, let's go ahead and set up our limits. We have a right-hand limit and a left-hand limit. So I'll start with the left first. And a right. And so my left-hand limit, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of 1 divided by x, x minus 1, oops, 1 to the fourth. And the other one is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of 1 over x minus 1 to the fourth. And we're going to go ahead over here and do our little scratch work. And so, uh, again, we'll use the same value, 0 0.9 and 1.1. Uh, and so if I plug in 0 0.9, uh, and I get I, 1 is still a positive number, so I'm going to go ahead and just make that pretty easy. So my numerator is always going to be positive. 
And so if I plug in point 0.1, or excuse me, point 0.9, so point 0.9 minus 1 gives me a negative number, but if I raise that to the fourth power, it's going to yield a positive number. So I have a plus here. And so this is going to positive infinity. So now let's check the right-hand side. I'm going to use uh, 1.1. 1 .1. Again, 1 is positive. It's always going to be positive, so let's go ahead and just write that plus there. And so 1.1 minus 1, that gives me a positive number. Well, a positive number raised to the fourth, again, is still going to give me a positive number. And so that gives me, again, positive infinity. So let's go ahead and check our graph to see if that's also reflected. All right, and turn it on. Uh, I'm going to go to my y coordinates and clear that out and plug in my new one. So 1 divided by x minus 1 to the fourth. Let's go ahead and graph it. And it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and do zoom standard, see what's going on here. And I'm going, let's go ahead and change our window. Let's do, uh, I don't know, negative 5. Let me go down here and let's make that 5. Let's see, let's see if we can see that better. There it is. As you can see, here's my two functions. Uh, my uh, vertical asymptote is not really showing right now, but you can see my two functions, my two parts of my function on the left-hand side, they're both going up to positive infinity, which is shown um, what we showed algebraically just earlier.